Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate finding Nash equilibrium, dominant strategies and also dominant strategy equilibrium. This is a video for beginners so I'm only covering the simplest sort of cases and it's not a formal treatment of these concepts at all, it's more practical, though I am open to making a video that gives a more formal treatment of this stuff. If you want something like that please leave a comment below. There are detailed contents in the description if you want to skip ahead. Very briefly though, in this video I will go through two games. In the first game I will demonstrate finding Nash Equilibria and in the second game I will find a dominant strategy equilibrium which will also be a Nash Equilibrium. And just to note we're only dealing with pure strategies here, so only pure strategy Nash Equilibrium and dominance with pure strategies. Alright let's start. For game number one I'm going to start with a 2 by 2 matrix. I'll put player one on the left hand side of the matrix and player two on the top. The number of rows in our table is going to be equal to the number of possible actions that player one can take. So in this game, let's imagine that player one can play up, that would be associated with the first row, or down, that's associated with the second row. The number of columns will be equal to the number of possible actions that player 2 can take and in this game let's say that player 2 can go left, that will be the first column, or right, that corresponds to the second column. So player 1 has two possible actions, player 2 has two possible actions as well and this means that there are four possible outcomes. Each of our possible outcomes corresponds to a cell in the matrix and the numbers in the cells are going to represent the payoffs that each player gets at each outcome. So let's say in this game that if player 1 plays up and player 2 plays left, then player 1 gets a payoff of 5 and player 2 gets a payoff of 6. And just as a matter of convention, I'm going to write player 1's payoff first and then player 2's payoff second. If player 1 plays down and player 2 plays left, player 1 gets a payoff of 10 and player 2 gets a payoff of 2. If player 1 plays up and player 2 plays right, player 1 gets 15 and player 2 gets 4. If player 1 plays down and player 2 plays right, player 1 will get 16 and player 2 will get 6. So that's the game that I'm going to analyse. And just to make some qualifications, our players are playing simultaneously, so at the same time. It's full information, so all the players know the game and everything about the game, and our players play their strategies with certainty. So we're only dealing with what we call pure strategies. The other sort of case that you can get is called mixed strategies. That's when our players can play their strategies with probabilities less than one. So that's our game. The first thing that I'm going to do is find what we call our best responses. Somewhat roughly, our best responses will be the strategies that our players should take if they want to maximize their payoffs, given or conditional on the strategies of the other players in the game. So a strategy in game theory is like a plan of action for a player. It will be a description of what they will do during the game. And because this game is very simple, our players' possible strategies will just be equal to their possible actions. So either go up or down for player one, or go left or right for player two. To find our best responses, we're going to imagine that we're one player and we will evaluate the best strategy for that player for every possible strategy that the other player can take. So let's imagine that we're player one and player two plays left. So we're on the first column, shaded in yellow. Well, player one could play up and get five or play down and get 10. 10 is a higher payoff than 5, so if player 2 plays left, player 1's best response is to play down. And I'm going to underline under the 10 to indicate that finding, and I can write the results on the right here as well. Alright, well if you're player 1 and player 2 plays right, we're on the second column, well player 1 can play up and get 15, or down and get 16, so that we see that down is the best response for player 1 to player 2 playing right because 16 is greater than 15. So we have found player 1's best responses to each of player 2's possible strategies. Let's think about player 2's best responses. So we're going to imagine that we're player 2 and let's say player 1 plays up. Well we would be on this first row, player 2 could go left and get 6 or right and get 4. 6 is greater than 4, so player 2's best response is to go left if player 1 plays up. If player 1 goes down, we're on the second row. 
Player two could go left and get two, or right and get six. Six is greater than two, so right is a best response for player two to player one playing down. So that's player two's best responses. Now, a Nash equilibria will be any outcome where both of our players are playing best responses to one another. We might say we're looking for an intersection of best responses. So visually, we're looking for any cell with two lines in it that will be an intersection of best responses. So you can see the Nash equilibrium in this game is actually here where player one plays down and player two plays right. Now let's think about why this is a special outcome, why this is one solution concept for this game. Well, if our players are playing best responses to one another, then they're both doing the best that they can given what the other player is doing. So it's a place of a sort of stability. At this point, no one has a reason to change their behavior. And this is actually a good thought. So let's restate this. At a Nash equilibrium, no player can benefit from unilaterally deviating. Now, when I say unilaterally, I just mean one player is moving, but the other player's strategy is being held fixed. So at our Nash equilibrium that we found, player one cannot do better by changing from down to up because otherwise they would get 15 rather than 16. Likewise, player two from the Nash equilibrium can't benefit by changing to left because if they did that, they would get two, which is less than six. Now I should say, when we write out the Nash equilibrium, it will be down right. So we're going to list player one's strategy first and then player two's strategy. When we describe the Nash equilibrium, we would not write out the payoffs associated with that Nash equilibrium. So we don't say 16-6, that would be incorrect. All right, let's think about game number two. In this game, the Nash equilibrium will also be a dominant strategy equilibrium. And I've got the payoffs straight up there on the matrix. So let's go straight away to finding our best responses. We can imagine first that we're player one and let's think about what we should do if player two plays the left. Well, player one could play up and get 10 or down and get 12. 12 is a higher payoff. So if player two plays left, player one's best response is to play down. If player two plays right, well, player one could play up and get nine or down and get 15. Down is a best response if player two plays right for player one because 15 is greater than nine. So that's player one's best responses. Now there is something special here. Note that the strategy down is a best response for player one regardless of what player two does. Now this means that down is what we call a dominant strategy for player one. It doesn't matter what player two does, player one should play down. So we have a new concept. A dominant strategy is a strategy that is best for a player regardless of the strategy that is played by the other players. All right, let's check player two's best responses. Imagine where player two and player one plays up. So we're on the first row. Player two could go left and get three or right and get 10. 10 is greater than three, so player two's best response is to go right if player one plays up. If player one plays down, player two could go left and get eight or right and get 12. Since 12 is greater than eight, right is the best response for player two to player one playing down. All right, so that's player two's best responses. Can you see anything of interest? Well, we have one Nash equilibrium, which is at down right for the same reasons we discussed in the first case. This is an intersection of best responses. But additionally, it looks like right is a dominant strategy for player two. Regardless of what player one does, right gives a better outcome than left for player two. So if player one plays down and player two plays right, not only is this a Nash equilibrium, but it's also an outcome where both players are playing their dominant strategies. So it's what we call a dominant strategy equilibrium as well. And we have all the features that I discussed before here. No one benefits from unilateral deviation. It's still a Nash equilibrium. But because it's an intersection of dominant strategies as well, it's not merely that everyone is doing the best they can given what the other player is doing, but also that everyone is doing the best they can regardless of what the other players are doing. Now, I should note that any equilibrium in dominant strategies will also be a Nash equilibrium, necessarily so. You can kind of see this by looking at the table visually with the lines underneath the payoffs. If we have an intersection of dominant strategies, then that intersection must also be an intersection of best responses, so also be a Nash equilibrium. 
So that's it for this video. I hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. You can also visit my website www.econhelp.com.au for more resources to help your study. At the moment, there's a little bit up there, but I'm, I'm getting more up uh, kind of all the time. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are having a great day.